Hi guys, good morning to all. Uh, guys, please note we will be starting the webinar in few minutes as we are waiting for more participants to get in. We'll start the webinar in four five minutes. Please note that. Okay, so let's get started with the webinar now. Hello guys uh, and welcome you all in this AI 102 certification webinar. Myself Shaitali, your host for this webinar. Moving ahead and talking about our event 
sponsor Synergetics. So Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company. So you will get question now who we are and what we do. So answering to your question, we browse you through our offerings and also give comprehensive advisory services to the client who wish to modernize their framework. We educate, advise, implement and manage. Then the solution synergetics offer uh, persona based onboarding. Then we have onboarding add on solution, certification solution, certification add on solution. Reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. What does Microsoft certification training do? Uh, so it will give a complete learning experience. You will get trained, build confidence to appear for the exam and get certified. That is get recognized. This is the delivery methodology. There are three types of delivery methods for state guided self learning. Then we have blended learning. And instructor led learning. So we do provide uh, this. Journey and the learning path with your. Own. Then we have certification benefits to the organization. You can benefit the organization. You will shift from unstructured learning to structured learning. Build complete uh, advantages, adding profit to the business, uh, then enhance brand reputation and more. Then how can you advance yourself? So this is the skilling journey. Of the Microsoft certification. Uh, first, you have to complete the fundamental training or the certification. Then you can move and go ahead with the advanced role base and expert level certification. In the fundamental certification, we do provide training on AZ 900 as your fundamental, AI 900 as your AI fundamental, DP 900 as your data fundamental, PL 900 power platform fundamental, and SC 900 security compliance and identity fundamental. And in role based certification, we have uh, certification trainings like AZ104, 204, AI102, DP203, PL series, and SC series. And in expert level training, we do provide training on AZ305, SC100, PL600, and AZ400. To know more about this certification training, which we do, you can connect with us uh, on the details, which will be provided to you all in the chat box later on. Then our certification offerings. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skill. Uh, we do provide certification add-ons, onboarding add-ons, like short duration modules and more. Then talking about our uh, community that is Azure Tech community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technologies. Under this community, we have uh, communities like emerging technology community for all. Then we have Azure Tech Community Pune for Pune Curse. As Emerging Technology Community Surat for Surat Techies. Azure Tech Community Nagpur for Nagpur Curse. Simply you just need to install the Meetup app 
on your phone or on your device to follow this communities. The links will be shared with you all in the chat box. So you can go and follow our communities. Then the code of conduct. Please note uh, to conduct create create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note participants are not allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording while the speaker is presenting his or her screen. Uh, we'll try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel for those who need a revision of this training. Then the speaker for this training is Mr. Navjoti Barua. He is an AVP of Technology Depart Department. Then the agenda for this webinar. You will get to know more about the certification, understanding and benefit of the certification. Also the learning path, journey path will be explained to you all. Uh, in the in this webinar, we are providing AI 102 learning achievement batch. So make sure you get this batch activated. The steps which has been mentioned on the screen will be provided to you all with the URL in the chat box. So you just have to simply follow the steps and get your batch activated. You can share the batch on your LinkedIn and Twitter profile as well. Then do follow us on our social media platforms to get the relevant updates on our upcoming webinars, workshops, certification training we do. The links will be provided to you all in the chat box. That's all. Now I would like to hand over the mic to the speaker so he can go ahead with the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Satali. Okay, so hope everybody can see my PPT and uh, I'm audible to all of you. Okay, so very good morning to all of you. So let me set the context for this particular uh, training that we'll have today till afternoon. So as you can see on the screen, so we'll be talking about AI 102 certification from Microsoft. And once you complete this certification, you should be able to develop AI solutions using Microsoft as your AI services. So this course is typically designed for the developer who are actually developing application using .NET and Python. And they can infuse the AI capability to their application, artificial intelligence capability to their applications by using cloud resources, the cloud AI services. This course is broken into multiple modules since it is a very brief uh, training. So it is not a kind of deep dive training that we are going to do today. But we are going to pick up a couple of module from the entire course. And then I will walk you through the AI services from Microsoft Azure that we can make use of them from our application and deploy applications on Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform. So that is the context of this training. In fact, I will give 
information about how you can go and prepare for this exam. Where do we have to go? And what do you need to do? In order to take this exam or in order to pass this exam. Once you have completed the entire course. So study material for this course would be made available from the Microsoft documentation, Microsoft Learn, in fact, so you can go to the Microsoft Learn and see module by module. You know the detail in detail uh, documentation, so you can go through those. Module and then you can start preparing for the exam. So my name is Navjyoti Barua. I'm working as an AVP technology at Synergetics. And I'm an MCT also. So today I'm here to do the training on AI102. Now, as I said before also, This course is designed for C Sharp and Python developer, but while I'm giving a demo during the training, so I won't be able to use both the programming language. So I'll be using only C Sharp, only .NET code to explain how we can make use of Microsoft as your AI services. Now, what are the services that we would be using? from this particular course, as you can see a list of services like as your cognitive service, as your bot service, as your cognitive search and as your applied AI. So how those services can be applied, you know, implicitly from. An application that would be an applied AI service going forward. Now, I said in the beginning, this course is being broken into multiple module. Like. Introduction to AI on Azure. So what are the services currently available on Azure? From the AI category. That we can make use of them to develop. AI based application, artificial intelligence based application. So that would be. Uh, basically a kind of introduction from the Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform. Then we'll go into. A specific service that is the backbone of. AI resources on Microsoft Cloud that is called cognitive service. And those cognitive services can be broken into different types of activities working with the language, working with the text, working with the videos, working with the images, working with the files, and so on and so forth. So these are the services that what you can see from the course like NLP, speech enable application language understanding solutions qa solutions question answering solution and of course the conversational ai that is bought computer vision which is being used to analyze the images and you can go to the advanced level of analyzing an images by having custom vision solutions. Detecting, analyzing and recognizing faces, human face from a particular image, from a particular photos. Reading text in an image in a document that is. A kind of. Uh, a service that uh, you know that we can use. Uh, Say I may be hundreds, I may have hundreds of documents, but rather than deploying a human 
to read those documents. So I can deploy a service from my application to read those documents, summarize the documents, and then display it on the screen. Creating a knowledge mining solution also. Another implementation of Azure AI services. Knowledge mining is all about I can ask questions. Your application is going to give answer. So your application will. Backed by a pack of knowledge on a particular subject. According to the training that we are going to do on the data. That my applications can consume or use in order to answer your queries. So applications can act as a knowledge mining solutions. So these are the different. Way of implementing Microsoft as your AI services in our application to make our application modernize to make our application AI base artificial intelligence base. So as I said. We won't be able to complete the all this module during this training so i'm going to go and talk about the few module today so these are the module that i'm going to discuss today that you will get a fair idea how the cognitive service or how the ai service from the microsoft can be used from your application the rest would be also in the same pattern going forward. It will not be something new or maybe something different because there would be a consistent programming model across the services. Only the service is going to be changed. So with that, we'll go to the first module where we are going to talk about introduction to AI on Azure. So. As I said, Azure is a cloud platform. And Azure. Is going to offer us. Different services and resources under the different categories. The AI is one of the category under which you are going to see a list of services. So we must understand the ecosystem of AI on Microsoft Azure Cloud. So what service can do what? Because we are not going to develop those service. On our own because these are ready made service that can be called from our applications by making an API call. Because those services going to be used by applications. By just making a call to the API because the service is exposed through an APIs. Because in order to process your data. While you'll be asking for a. Result you need to pass to your data. So behind the scene. The API is going to use a lot of compute resources in order to respond your queries. So it is not possible that all the AI service we can build on our own because these are the AI service with the ready made. Functionalities, if you want to consume that functionalities, you can make a call to those API. Which is basically presented by. Any kind of functionalities or the capability in the space of artificial intelligence. So with that mindset, we must understand what is there. On Microsoft Azure from the AI category. But before that, what do we mean by artificial intelligence? So artificial intelligence is a concept or you can say as a capability. That is being infused to your application or applications started behaving like a human. 
So typically a human has a brain to answer the queries. But we can also infuse the brain to our application today by having those AI capabilities, by having all the AI service around our application. So rather than using a human brain to analyze or to answer, okay, to identify all those things collectively we can do from an application. So we are offloading those capability the human was using to identify, to organize or to, you know, answer a query has gone to your application today. And that's how the developer will capitalize those capabilities within their application that they can offload the human task to the application. Now, what kind of task that I am referring to? It could be different tasks, like you know. So we have to very we have to identify those tasks by putting them in the respective categories. The categories like somebody wants to do a text analysis. Now, what do we mean by that? So suppose I have given you a paragraph. Now I have to find out. Like, for example, I can be very specific. Somebody has written a, a review on a particular product by writing a one paragraph. Now I can give this paragraph to my AI service and AI service can come back and tell me whether the review is positive or a negative or the review is neutral. So rather I deploy a human to understand the review, so I can really deploy my AI service to review, to read that review and figure out. So whether that review is positive or negative in the scale of zero to one. So I'm just giving an example or maybe we can talk about. An image. I can give an image to the cognitive, I mean, like AI service. So AI service can detect what are the objects available in that image, that photos, who all are there in that photos. And not only that, we would be able to know the coordinate, the position of those objects in a particular photo. So it is a complete analysis of an image, of what is being asked by an application. So all aspect, all informations can be produced by the AI. Like as I said, uh, more on the image analysis part, uh, not only identifying object, it can describe also about that image by looking at the image. So what is happening? What do you want to tell through this particular images? You can tag those images under a particular category. And these are all all kind of informations that you can get by simply passing that image to the AI services. The another category, as you can say, see the speech. So while you are speaking at real time, you can translate the language to multiple languages. Or while you're speaking, after a particular time, so you can create a su summary from the speakers, what I'm trying to speak, what is the summary of what I have spoken for last half an hour. So you can ask, how you want information to be captured by calling those AI services because that belongs to a particular category. That's what I said. It may be a category for the, the visual perceptions. It may be a category from the text analysis. It can be a category from the speech or it can be category for a decision making. Now decision making is something like 
if I give you a particular image of a fruits, so I should be able to talk about what type of fruits it is. So it means I can decide by identifying that particular object and I'll be confident to say, and this is the fruits with a particular percentage. Like I said, I'm confident in 96% and this fruit is banana or an apple or orange and so on and so forth. I'm just giving an example. So it is not only go and predict and it is not only going to make a decisions what you have asked for and at the same time that co that your cognitive service or a AI service can tell us how confident they are while they are they are actually coming and telling me what object it was from the image that I have given to the AI services. So now the AI is, AI is becoming in an integral part of your life, everyday life, and that is being driven by your application. Now only point is that what type of application that you want to develop. The category is right in front of you. And today we talk about the open AI also. You know, so those open AI is a very sensitive and very robust today. So like this course is typically go and talk about the traditional AI service which is available from the Microsoft Azure, but on top of that going forward, we need to learn the set of services from the open AI, which also made available from Microsoft Azure. So now this particular exam AI 102 has also incorporated bit of open AI. As your open AI service on top of the cognitive service, what we have discussed from our the list of modules in the course agenda. Now, what is the core of an artificial intelligence that we must understand? The core of an artificial intelligence is the machine learning, ML. The ML is a subject through which we can train the data because if I ask my applications about something, how applications can tell me the answer? So application has to learn like the human learn. So I'm speaking on this particular a course like AI 102 because I have learned this course. I know everything about this course and on that basis. I'm talking to you. I'm explaining to you. Similarly, tomorrow if I ask. My application to learn and subsequently the application would be responsible for answering your query. So without learning how the application is supposed to answer your queries. So at first the application has to learn themselves. What they're supposed to do. What they're supposed to answer. The subject of machine learning am learning with a different way of learn by them themselves. It is the core of the artificial intelligence. And that's how the machine learning subject is being driven by algorithm. Driven by training. The data what we call as a model. And eventually we come out with some kind of predictive model and that predictive model can be used from our applications. Who can predict? Who can answer our queries? Who can tell me how confident they are while they are answering our queries? So the first thing has happened before coming into the AI. AI is a very abstract. You now behind the scene, it's all about machine learning. It's all about model. It's all about data. It's all about training. It is all about predictive model. It's all about algorithm. So there are different type of algorithms for naming them. It can come from a 
kind of the classification or regressions. You know, so these are different type of algorithm today. The machine learning used to learn from the data and subsequently they can predict. By learning from the data and they can answer by learning from the data. So Microsoft Azure is going to use set of services and those services is based on the ML. So that is what this particular PPT is trying to tell you. So you may develop an applications where you go and infuse the AI capabilities. That's perfectly fine. But deep down the behind the scene who made. The AI capability possible to your application that is the machine learning. So in this course we will not go into the detail of the machine learning. What is algorithms? How we can train data by using algorithms? How we can test the data before we produce a model and how we can consume a model from the ultimate application. So that part is not being. Explained or that part is not. Being explored from the AI 102. But you must understand as an AI developer going forward, if you need to develop a custom AI service today, you need to go back to the fundamentals like machine learning or deep learning. NLPs. All right, so these are the few underlying concept, the underlying technology that need to be learned. To become a complete AI developer. Now machine learning is a part of the subject called data science. So data science is nothing but an application of mathematical and statistical techniques to analyze the data. So I talk about the algorithm because this algorithm can dictate algorithm can command the data how the data to be analyzed. In what parameters the machines can learn about the data? What context data is exposing for a particular mathematical and statistical technique that could be applied on the data to analyze the data to make it more meaningful to your business? That is a subject what we call as a data science. So data science is more driven by mathematical and statistical hmm. techniques. Yeah, so. So this is this is what is. Is 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 the whole uh, kind of, uh, you know. The block, the building block of your. Uh, AI, so it means it is interdependent, although in this course we may talk about the AI services. We may talk about the abstract service that we would be using from our application, but this is the complete. Pyramid that we must understand from where it is originated. It is originated from a data science, then getting into a machine learning and then getting into an artificial intelligence. And as a developer, we are just using artificial intelligence until we go and develop our own algorithm, develop our own model for our own business, which is driven by our own data. But again, I'm just telling you, so we do not need to go into this kind of. Uh, what do you call uh, this level of? Uh, implementation at this moment from this AI 102, so we'll be stick to only the service where the AI model is being used implicitly. So I just need to know the behavior of the service, the outcome of the service that could be relevant to your applications where you want to use what. So in summary, what I'm trying to tell you that you are not going to go and create your own model. In this course, 
So you are going to go and make use of existing model, pre-created model. Through the cognitive ready-met APIs, cognitive ready-met the services which is available on Microsoft Cloud. So, as I said, this course is for the AI engineer, right? So, who have been developing application using C Sharp, Python, Node.js, and so on and so forth. Who has the knowledge of how to consume an API by making a REST call or how to consume an API by writing a code using SDK, Software Development Kit, or extending that, how you can implement DevOps pipelines, the concept of source control and continuous integrations and continuous deployment, that is CICD. And as we say this for AI developer, I have been explain, explaining that although you are not going to go and create model, but you must understand what is called model training and inferencing. So these are few things that you need to know. Probability and confidence score, responsible AI and ethics. That is one of the most important part that you need to add, you need to subscribe as an AI engineer. What is responsible AI? AI can be used for the destruction also, but you're not supposed to develop something who can destroy by using an AI. So you need to be constructive. You need to be sign an agreement because uh, while you, for hypothetically what I'm saying that, you know, on the Microsoft Cloud, whatever the AI service that you would be using from your application, it is already come under the banner of responsibility. AI. So you cannot manipulate those services by converting the mod, by diverting the motive on what basis the AI service was developed. You won't be able to manipulate that. Because it's a protected environment from where those AI service would be called from your application. It is already inbuilt. But tomorrow, if you have a given an open space to develop an AI application, so you won't be able to use it for, you know, the bad reason. So you have to understand how constructively you can contribute to the human mankind by taking the responsibility not to create a bad impact from your application any given point in time. So that is the responsible AI and ethics that you need to inculcate going forward as a AI engineer or AI developer. Now, if I want to elaborate more on this, like for example, so what responsible AI means to us? If I want to just go into kind of detail into this. So there are a few pillar, like six pillar of an irresponsible AI. The first one is called fairness. The second one is called reliability and safety. The third one is privacy and security. The fourth one is inclusiveness. And the fifth one is transparency. And the last one is accountability. So what is the fairness talks about? The AI system should treat all the people fairly. For example, suppose you create a machine learning model to support a loan approval application for a bank. The model should make predictions of whether or not a loan should be approved without incorporating any bias base on gender. Okay. Ethnicity or other factor that might result in an unfair advantage of 
or disadvantage to a specific group of applicant. So you have to treat applicant equally. So you won't be able to write a code so where you can do some kind of partiality to identify an applicant and give a loan to this applicant only. That is a fairness that you have to maintain. Okay, so that is what uh, one of the responsible AI pillar that everyone need to understand. On top of that, AI machine learning include the capability of interpreting the model and quantify the extent to which each features of the data influences the model's predictions. This capability help data scientists and developer identify and mitigate the bias in the model. So you won't be able to create a model who itself is a bias model. That is what we are. And that is one of the most responsible part for the data scientists who typically create algorithms and subsequently the model. And those model is going to be used by developer. So we need to identify and mitigate the bias from those model if the model was created based on the biasness of the functionalities or capabilities. The another aspect is reliability and the safety. What we get, as you see, AI systems should perform the reliability and safety. For example, consider an AI based software system for an autonomous a vehicle or a machine learning model that diagnose a patient's symptoms and recommend the prescriptions. Unreliability in this kind of system can result a substantial risk to the human life. So you are finding the symptoms of a particular disease and subsequently you are writing a prescriptions through the AI application. So you can't go wrong in that process. Because the human has to rely on that process of writing prescriptions by figuring out the symptoms, but there is no human, no doctor associated with this process. Only applications may be associated with this process of writing prescription, and it does really today. This is one of the implementations in the healthcare sectors of an AI. To upload the burden from. So I didn't understand what you said. Today is AI session instead of. AZ102. So yes, it is not a AZ series. It is an AI session only. OK, that is AI. 102. OK, uh, so we will be talking about only the AI related services, artificial intelligence related services from the Microsoft Azure, not any other service. OK, the questions that is being asked by Sakib, that is the answer. All right, so. So next is. What is. The privacy and securities, and this is also very important for the AI developer. So any AI system should be secured and res respect the privacy. OK. So you're not supposed to make your data public, your your private data a public. The machine learning model on which the AI system are based rely on the large volume of data which may contain personal details that must be kept private even after the model are trained and the system is in production it is used you uh, 
it, it uses the new data to make predictions or take actions that may be subject to a privacy and security concern. So I talked about because all this AI is driven by data. The machine learning that we talk about who learns from the data and those data of yours, your organization data, your personal data that is being used by machine learning. So those data need to be kept private. It should not be accessed by some other system. It need to be secure. It need to be protected. Even after model are trained and the system is in production, it is used uses a new data to make predictions or to make actions that may subject to a privacy or security concern. So while your data is being used to predict in that context also, your data need to be protected. And by having these services on the Microsoft Azure in that field, you don't need to worry about because Microsoft Azure is a robust platform where privacy and security would be on the first place, the first things to be uh, considered or first things to be addressed for any case, whether in form of data or an application or an API. Now, inclusiveness is another one. The AI system should empower the everyone and engage people. AI should bring the benefit to all parts of the society, regardless of physical ability, gender, or sexual orientations, ethnicities, or other factors, like the transparency. AI systems should be understandable. User should be made fully aware of the purpose of the system, uh, how it's work and what limitations may be expected from an AI system. That has to be transparent. Whoever is going to use an AI system, the nitty gritty of the AI system to be known to the, subscribe the su subscriber of the AI system limitation of this particular AI system also need to be known to the end user, whoever is going to use that. And then accountabilities, the people should be accountable for the AI system. The designer and the developer of an AI based solution should work within a framework of governance and organizational principle that ensure that the solutions meet the ethical and legal standard that are clearly defined. So you are re responsible for developing an AI system. If something goes wrong, which you have created and you are completely accountable for that, so that's why whatever the solutions that you would be building tomorrow as an AI engineer, it should work within the framework of governance. And of course, the organizational principle that always ensure the solutions meet the ethical and legal standard, which was clearly defined in the beginning when you have started building that AI system. OK, so these are important aspects, as I said, because as a developer, you will get to know it's a part of your. Uh, solutioning, so you will be capable of creating solutions on the cloud using AI services, but at the same time. You are a responsible AI developer, considering all the aspects that need to be incorporated while you develop, while you published a system on the cloud. Now we are going to be very specific on the Microsoft Azure because we talk about what is AI, 
what are the main component of an AI and where from AI was originated. And if tomorrow, if I have to develop an AI system, how I'm accountable, the accountabilities for the AI development by considering the different aspect. That is what we have discussed so far. Now coming into the Microsoft Azure. So what are the services that we are going to get? From the Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform, the number one we are going to get Azure Machine Learning. As I said, this course does not explore the machine learning in detail. But. Microsoft Azure have the machine learning service through which you can train a model. You can do the experiments from the data. It could be a real time data or it could be a historic data. And once you can create a model, that model can be deployed or model can be published. And subsequently, the user can consume those model from their application. So this whole the life cycle of a machine learning can be done by using something called Azure Machine Learning Service from Microsoft Azure. Since it is a cloud platform for creating and operating the machine learning solutions, so we do not have to build our own infrastructure. All would be given out of the box. We would be given the workspace where we can do all, all, all those things. Getting data, training data, experimenting that model, exposing a model or publishing a model and consuming a model from your application. <coughs> so that is the first service. From the Microsoft Azure. The second service which is we are going to go and explore from this course is AI 102. Is is all about cognitive service. And goes cognitive service is. REST APIs. As I said before, also the service that you are not going to build on your own. These are the ready made service you are going to consume from your application. But while you are consuming those services as an API from your applications, we have to identify them. What kind of services under which category that service belongs to? So these are the different category under which you are going to see the list of cognitive services related to language, related to speech, related to vision, and related to decisions. And then going with some kind of apply AI services like from recognizer, matrix advisors, video analyzer for medias, immersive readers, bot service, cognitive search. These are all applied services. So internally cognitive services being applied to give a umbrella service right in front of you. OK, so from the applied service, we talk about like bot service. The bot is being used for a conversational. AI platforms. That you can communicate with the bot like a human. Does so if you want to know about a product, you can ask. About the product. From the bot. And those bot can be integrated with different channels. Like you can integrate a block with the mailbox. We can integrate a bot with the messengers. We can integrate a bot with some kind of. 
channels through which we can do the chat. Like teams. But eventually what the bot is the with the help of bot, the user can start conversing with the bot and bot act as a human to respond every query placed by the human in front of the bot. And it it can understand the thread of communications. So one questions can lead up to another questions. Another questions can lead up to another questions. So the bot understand the thread of communications until your communications has come to a logic and conclusions. You can keep on asking. Related questions from where you have started and where you want to go. The another applied service from the board to Azure Cognitive Search. Now Azure Cognitive Search is basically intelligent search that we can do from an internet. So I can just go and tell what exactly I'm looking for. I should be given exactly what I'm looking for kind of things. So your capability of the search activity is being driven by the AI enrichment pipeline. OK, so. So eventually you can do some kind of smart search. By using as your cognitive. The search what we are looking at at this moment, so these are applied because the AI capability is being applied to do. This kind of activities. So you are looking for something. From a particular document. You are searching for something from a particular documents. With some kind of key phrases. We can make use of Azure Cognitive Search. So intelligently. This service will go and find those keywords for me. OK, so this is what. The idea is that you would be spending some time, you would be exploring those things and you will get to know eventually how those things can be used. In a particular use case scenarios. But always working with AI is an interesting subject. Because. Till now what we are doing by an human and that is beginning to offloading them to the application. But we have to be very responsible like in how far we can go to offload. The human intelligence to an application and that is something to be debatable going forward, but it is always an interesting subject to work with an AI going forward. And especially when you talk about an open AI today. It's more interesting. Because the kind of capabilities the open AI is bringing in front of us, the most of the day to day job would be taken over by the open AI. Which is based on some kind of large language model from the machine learning model that we talked about LLM. So it is being more. 
in, uh, you know, used today in, in, in context of, you know, the knowledge mining or maybe QA or maybe some kind of conversational format. You ask questions, you should be able to get answer for all your questions. You ask artificial intelligence to do something and they are going to do exactly what you have asked for. So writing an application, writing a blogs, writing an essay that also you can ask today to an artificial intelligence and they are going to write an essay on a particular subject or blogged on a particular subject, a particular topic. So, so far what we have learned in this module, this module was all about introduction to AI as well as introduction to list of AI service from the Azure platform. And that is what we have started with, the AI machine learning data science, and then getting into the cognitive service and the applied cognitive service like bot and the Azure search, cognitive search. So from that, we can just test ourselves what we have learned so far. It says which of the following is the best described to predict predictions made by the machine learning model. It says probabilistic value based on correlations found in the training data. Now I said before also how to train a data by using a machine learning is not a subject of this particular course. But as an AI developer, you can go and see what is machine learning? What is the probabilistic values based on the correlations found in the training data by me? Because while you do the training, the training does the correlations between the data to come up to a conclusion that this data belongs to this category, this data belongs to that category, and subsequently, so any data comes under that categories, the model can predict exactly what this data is all about, what this particular information is all about. A data scientist has used the Azure machine learning to train a machine learning model. How can you use the model in your applications? This need to be the Azure machine learning has to publish the model as a web service, as an API that people can consume from their respective application. You want to index a collection of text documents and you want to search them from a mobile application switch service. It's an applied service that we are talking about. There's your cognitive service. So this is in some and substances what we are learning from the module one. So you must get a fair idea. The how the AI is going to work from your application development point of views, because you are a developer tomorrow, you will be infusing those AI capability into your existing application. But in order to do this, so you need to be aware of what we are discussing as of now. OK. So this was the first module that talk about overview, then we'll go to the actual service and then we'll discuss the service and subsequently we'll go and implement. By. Writing a demo, so practically we are going to see what are the things that we would be discussing during the session. OK, so let us go to the next module and jump into the actual service.
and as I said before also, we won't be able to go and explore all the service. We would be basically running through a couple of services and see how those services can be used practically by writing an application at the end of the day. So this is how we will be looking at, uh, you know, uh, this course. So let me go to my next presentations. <clears throat> So this uh, module will be talking about developing AI app with a cognitive service. So we are going to go and look at practically what are the cognitive service and how we can use them from our application. using cognitive service for an enterprise application. So while I'm using a cognitive service from an enterprise application, so what are the considerations that we have to make? So these are few things that we are going to learn during this model. Now, as I already explained, the cognitive services are a set of APIs. The Microsoft has created those API, which is backed by a particular model to perform a task within our application. So we need to deploy those resources. We need to create these resources by going inside our subscription because it is made available from the Azure. So we need a subscription to create those cognitive service. Now, cognitive service is being made available to us in two form. One is called multi-service resources and another is called single service resources. The difference between the two, if I create a multi-service resource of type cognitive service, by using the key and the endpoint of the cognitive service, you can make a call to a different type of services like languages, visions, text. All services can be made call by having one multi-service resources. Or I can independently create a service to, to only the language. Okay, so saying that I have a cognitive service to deal with only the language, so that is also possible. Okay, so that is also possible that we can. So the best practice would be a cognitive service because under a banner of a single service, you can keep calling to a language, you can keep calling to a uh, you know, the visions, you can keep calling to a tech service, you can keep calling the other services because the multi-service is an umbrella service. The, all the different type of services that we will be calling under the banner of the cognitive service, the bill will come to cognitive service collectively because every service will have a different pricing. But eventually, the total price 
that we are going to spend in order to make call to those services will be coming un under the banner of the cognitive services. Now, beyond that, there are few services that will have a two endpoint, one for the training and one for the predictions. So you are going to explicitly use a training endpoint to do the training on a data to create a model. And eventually, you are going to use the model from the, the prediction endpoint. That we'll see. So this is basically applicable when you create your own model rather than using an existing model behind a cognitive service. So this is the UI through which you would be creating a cognitive service, whether you create a multi-service or whether it can create a single service. So you should be able to. So once your cognitive service got created. So you are going to get some detail from the cognitive service, the endpoints, key and the locations where we have deployed the cognitive service. What is the endpoint and what are the keys? Because we need collectively those informations to make a call to the cognitive service from my application. So those information is required as your data center in which resource is being provisioned, required by some SDK client that we have to mention the location also while I'm making a call to this service that is being deployed in a particular geographic location. Key is being used to authenticate because it is not free of cost. You have to authenticate by having a key. If you don't have a key, you won't be able to make a call to the cognitive service. And finally, the URL where the cognitive service is being made available in what locations your cognitive service is up and running that you have provisioned by creating that cognitive service. Now, apart from the program, apart from the code like .NET or a Python code that you can run to do that, but apart from that, you can also directly make a call to a cognitive service by using HTTP request from a REST API. So client submit the HTTP request to resource endpoint. And key specify the request header input data in the JSON format. Specific schema varied by the service and the method and service return the JSON response. So this is your request, this is your response, and this is the cognitive service that you have on the top. So from your terminal, you can make an HTTP request to a cognitive service, but while you are making an HTTP request, you should have a header, and your key goes inside the header. Your data will go in a form of JSON. OK, so uh, then we look into the SDK. The developer will make use of those SDKs to write a code to call from the code a cognitive service. By knowing those informations like endpoints and the key mainly along with the locations where the cognitive service was deployed. So this is all about library abstract the rest interface. So as a .NET developer, as a Python developer, as a Node.js or Java or other developer also can make a call to the cognitive service.
Yeah, I already talked about last one hour only on the cognitive service. So I'm doing it one more time again. So cognitive service is a set of APIs that is available on Microsoft Azure. So we do not have to create our own model to get the functionality of an artificial intelligence. These are ready-made services. For example, I want to analyze an image. I need to identify what is there in the image. I can use a cognitive service to do that. So I don't have to ask a human to see an image or see a photo to identify who all are there in that photo, who all are there in that image. So I can give that task to the cognitive service. These are AI services because we are offloading the task from the human. OK. So this is cognitive service is a ready-made API. We do not have to develop those services. Only we need to understand, OK, I'm going to call a text cognitive service to analyze a text. So what is written in the text? I want to analyze. Or I can say, a language cognitive service to identify in which language I am writing or in which language I'm instructing. Then I can make use of language cognitive service. I can use a video cognitive service to identify the content of a videos. Or I can identify the speaker in that particular videos and the topic that speaker is talking about. All those things can be outsourced to the cognitive service. So rather than the human does this job, the cognitive service would be taking over the job from the human and start using that. So cognitive service is a API. API is a common term, right? So that API may be a in general API also. API is a business logic that you can use from your application. But cognitive service API has a different meaning because the cognitive service is being used in context of artificial intelligence, not in general. But API in general also we can use to reuse a business logic from our application. So API is being used from quite some times. You know, we have been using API for last 20, 25 years, like, you know, how your applications consume APIs. That's always there. But we are talking about in context of artificial intelligence today. So now we talk more about you know, the introduction to the artificial intelligence, and then we started with a cognitive service. Now we can go and practically see where we can find those cognitive service and how we can make use of the cognitive service from our applications, from our code. So by meaning and applications, I'm not talking about like, a kind of the robust applications, you know, uh, but we must understand at least the statement or way of calling a cognitive service after deploying a cognitive service from the Microsoft Azure. And that is something what we are going to do now. OK, so before I go and do the practicals, we'll take a break of 15 minutes now, then we'll be coming back in 15 minutes and then we'll talk about. Uh, 
how to create cognitive service and uh, how to use it from our application. So let's take a break of 15 minutes. Until then, if you have any questions, you can post your questions into the team chat. And I will be happy to answer your questions.
OK, so we are starting now. So hope everybody have come from the break. So what we are going to go and do here is to make you understand. The first we are going to go and create uh, as your resource group. And inside the Azure resource group, we are going to go and create as your cognitive service. So we are going to create as your resource group. Sorry. So we are going to go and create a multi service. A resource what we have understood the two type of resource that we can create one is individual cognitive service and one is called multi service cognitive service and we are going to go and create that. Then we are going to see how we can call. The cognitive service call from .NET application. Call using a REST API or we can say REST client. Means basically that is an HTTP client. Then we are going to go how to secure. Cognitive service. Securing the cognitive service because it is on the top of your. Uh, cloud, so cloud will give us the infrastructure to secure that cognitive service. We must understand that we do not have to make this cognitive service so easily accessible. We need to protect the cognitive service that will look into that. To secure the cognitive service. We are going to use one minute just a minute
OK, sorry. So yes, so we are going to do a secure the cognitive service. Uh, how we are going to you by using uh, we can say use uh, we are going to use uh, as your uh, key vault another service. So essentially what we are going to do here. So we talk about when you make a call to the cognitive service. OK, so when you make a call to the cognitive service. I always need to pass a key means the cognitive service is going to give me a key and I have to make use of this key. While I'm calling the cognitive service, but if I make this key visible to the developer, if they can get access to the key by writing them in the code. And that is something what we call as an unprotected use of the keys because keys should not be visible directly to the developer while they will be using it. So we have to store the key in some other service like as your key vault. Where we can protect our key. So while I'm reading a key from the key vault, Actually, we cannot see the key in the human eye, so it would be programmatically or it would be by using some authorization and authentication. So we are going to use a key and then produce in front of the cognitive service while we're making a call to them. That is also going to be seen during the demo. The last one we will be talking about monitoring. Monitoring the cognitive service. So what do you mean by monitoring cognitive service? Like the cognitive services are the paid service. You know, every request that you would be making on the cognitive service is being paid service. It's actually need to pay. for the cognitive service. OK, the paid service that we are talking about, the monitoring. Uh, so that's why the monitoring is a critical aspect like. So I said, OK, in a day. If I'm making more than 20 calls. Then probably I need to raise the notifications. I need to kind of send a notification to the stakeholder of that particular. Cognitive service. Because every call that we are making on the cognitive service. We have to pay for that. So that is something that we can control or we can monitor. By knowing that how many call was made on my cognitive service. In 24 hours or in 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 a particular time duration that is up to you what conditions that you want to set it up but yes you should be able to kind of figure out in what conditions or how you want to monitor your cognitive service so these are the few things practically that we are going to explore now from the demo then you will get a fair idea you know how the cognitive service can be implemented from your day to day application. So first we will go to. Our management portal. This is currently I am in the management portal. This is as your management portal through which we can create as your resources. Cognitive service is one of them. So from here I can go to all service and from the all service we can go to this category called AI plus machine learning. And these are the list of AI services. OK, these are the list of AI services.
that we can see here. Okay, so so what are the what service that we are looking for? So this is why if I go to an AI services, you can see the list of AI services available from Microsoft Azure. So these are specific services, including the Azure Open AI, Cognitive Search computer vision, face API, custom vision, speech service, language service, translator, and these are all part of the AI services, language understanding, which is coming from the classic version out there. Right, so we can always go and create what kind of cognitive, open eyes or maybe you know so you can just go and click on something and start creating out there but i said i want to create a multi service resource under a particular resource group okay so i can directly go and look for only the cognitive service that is also possible out there rather than going into a the specific service that we can see out there. So I can go to the all service. From here I can say cognitive. So we should be able to go and look for, or maybe I can just go into my marketplace so i can see the cognitive service out there this is the cognitive service that we can see and this cognitive service is going to have those services that we talk about like all the service that we have seen, most of the service we have seen from the previous one will be part of the cognitive service. So cognitive service is a product that bundle that enables the customer to access multiple service with a single API key. And what are the services that cognitive service will give access to? The cognitive service will give access to vision, language, source, and speech using a single API. So these are the few cognitive service which will come under the banner of the cognitive service. And it will quickly connect the service together to achieve the more insight into the entire content. Easily integrate with the other service like Azure Source and some other as your services from the cognitive service. So I create this by clicking on the create one. So I'll create a resource group. I can say AI resource group. That is the resource group. Resource group is a logical. It's look like this basically. So 
We do have an Azure subscription. And below the Azure subscription, we are going to create the resource group. And below the resource group, we are going to have a cognitive service. And in this case, it is multi service instance. And uh, as we see below, so these are would be incorporated here. So vision, language, search, and speech, and Azure AI services all would be coming under the banner of the cognitive service that we talk about, this one. Now this is being backed by This is being backed by what we have learned that machine learning All right, so that is what we have discussed. But we do not have to go and create that machine learning model on our own because it's pre-created model on what basis the cognitive service can respond to my applications if I'm going to make a call to this cognitive service. So how am I going to, once it is being deployed, so the cognitive service is going to give me a few informations. So this is my client application. It could be a web application. It could be a mobile application. It could be a simple console application. So web, mobile and console application, this is basically a client. Client means it would be an AI application. So what we need to make a call to the cognitive service from this application. So we need something to do with an endpoint and a key and a location where cognitive service is being deployed. This is the information that is need that is needed by the AI application client to make a call to the cognitive service from Microsoft Azure. So it could be from anywhere. And this could be a .NET client or many any other client. It could be a .NET or a Python 
But in this case, we are going to go and kind of working with only the .NET at this moment, but the concept remained the same by using a different SDK for a Python or means the SDK to make a call to the cognitive service. So how do we can call since it is an API at the end of the day, it is just an API. Okay, like any other API. So when I'm making a call, I have to send that data in a form of JSON. And we get a response in a form of JSON. Because these are all REST API. So I can make a REST call. I can use SDK. So I can make a REST or I can make use of SDK. In order to interact with the cognitive service, so this is what. We go and see. Yeah, subscription means is. Is a, is a license to use. Microsoft Azure service. It is not only the cognitive service. All the services available from the Microsoft Azure can be used by having a subscription. It's like your account. So as long as you are going to use those resources, you will be billed every month. Like what are the service that you have consumed? It's like a credit card, so bill can be given to you based on some boundaries. And your subscription is a billing boundaries. OK, the subscription is a billing boundary in this context. So Azure is a big platform. It is not only going to give us only the cognitive service. What we are discussing is a range of service as you can see out there. From the all service, we can see the list of service which has come under the different category altogether. OK, so with that we are going back and try and deploy this. So under the resource group. The locations that I said and give a name. Demo. Cognitive service. We select the pricing how we are going to. You can just go and see how you are going to pay for this cognitive service. Like suppose I am going to deploy my cognitive service somewhere in the East US. And I want to go and see it. In Indian rupees, how we are going to go and pay. So in the calculation in dollar context, the today's price is 82. 7062 INR. Now you can take a look. So if I'm making a call to a computer, the vision service or a language, service, so let's go to a language only. I want to detect the language. When I type in a text, my cognitive service will tell me what language that I typed in or what language I am speaking in. So cognitive service can go and tell me that. Language detection. So if I go to a language detection. So 0.5 million to 2.5 million in the in between the range of text record. That they are going to detect. With the cost of this. 
per 1000 tax record. So this is what is the limit of this particular language detection service and how we are going to pay for them. So this is what a little bit of pricing the record corresponding to number of 100 1000 character units within a document that is provided as an input to the language service request so one record is composed of 1000 character that is what you are going to go and pay So like that, how many records that of this 1000 text limit that you would be using to detect the language and how you are going to pay? So this is something like it may not be a per month kind of billing system. It would be a per unit of text that you are going to detect from the language detections you would be paying accordingly. Right, so that is that will give you a little bit of idea because everything that we consume from Microsoft Azure this is a paid service. Nothing is going to come for the free, but you may get some free but this cannot be used in production because there won't be any SLA by having them in free. And you get to see the pricing tier as a standard. So this is the standard pricing tier at this moment that we can see. Location specific region only include the regional service. It does not specifically region for include non-regional service also. There are few services may not be available in that region under the banner of cognitive service. That is not going to come the moment I select it. So we talk about the responsible AI. And we click on by saying that, yes, I am a responsible AI developer. So whatever I'm going to use. From this cognitive service would be completely. Responsible under the compliance of the organization policies under the compliance of Microsoft Azure service ecosystem. So with that, we can go to the next part of the cognitive service that is all about network. Now, our cognitive service can be put inside a private network like this. Right, so this is the cognitive service in the resource group that we can see. But I can put this cognitive service. Inside a private network. So I can say this could be. your uh, something what we call as a, a virtual network now when you put this cognitive service inside a virtual network then previously i can make a query might make a request from my application to the cognitive service freely but once you put into a, a virtual network you cannot make a call to the cognitive service freely. Until. You configure. A kind of firewall. OK, so this is something like firewall. Rules. So who can get access to the cognitive service and who cannot? or who can call it. 
So maybe you may have to call from a particular IP address. Then only the cognitive service would be allowed to call something like this. OK, so this is how we can, you know, figure out to one is the accessibility is what we are looking at, how we can protect the accessibility by selecting a network. So there may be some kind of network that we can see now, the VNet 01 and subnet 1. So I can put these things inside that. But we do not want at this moment to be incorporated. So I can later on also put this service inside a network by creating a network. Disable no network access this resource. You could configure the private endpoint connection. That would be. Exclusive way to access this particular resource. You have to create a private endpoint here. OK, so. So we'll come back and see in later on. So now let's go to the identity. This is again. To. Kind of. Uh, if I. Would like to, this cognitive service has to go and use a, another resource enable system assign identity to grant the resource access to other existing resources. If this cognitive service has to go and get the key from the. If this cognitive service is going to go and get the key from the key vault. Then the cognitive service have to have an identity to showcase in front of the key vault before they retrieve the key from the key vault. So that is something also explicit one in, in, in context of this cognitive service. So I'll ignore that also now. The tag is just a label that we can assign to the cognitive service. We can ignore it. It is optional. Then eventually we can go and create that cognitive multi-service resource. That we can make a call. To a vision language and peace as an Azure AI service. And so we go and deploy this. So it's pretty quick. Cognitive service is being deployed. I will pin into the dashboard. And a form of tile. So we go back and see that the resource that I have created. So I want to pin this one. So this is my service. So this is the cognitive service. An icon is being represented about cognitive. I can just go back. And two most important things that we need to get from the key and the endpoint. The cognitive service. So this is the key. There are two key, primary key and the secondary key. So I get the key of the cognitive service. And the endpoint. So 
So this is the endpoint that I can copy from here, the last one. So this is the name of my cognitive service and the default domain name, the cognitive service.azure.com. And in fact, some SDK may require the location also where the cognitive service was being deployed. So in our case, it is East US. OK. So this is the. Three information that is critical that we need. From our application or from our client to make a call to the cognitive service. And apart from that, we can see the detail of the cognitive service where it is being deployed under which subscription subscription IDs. The resource group resource group is a logical container where I'm putting my cognitive service or any other service. The endpoint. The API kind is a co cognitive service. The pricing tier is a standard and so on and so forth. So these are the different type of. Categories. The cognitive service and the relevant resources that I can use as a developer. So now I will go and start calling my cognitive service by writing an application. So I'll go to the arrest client to call a cognitive service and I will go and open in Visual Studio Code. This is a .NET application. The target runtime is .NET Core 6.0. The first thing we can go to the app setting .json. And we have to get this to information. The key and endpoint which we have already copied somewhere. This is the key. I put the key here. And the endpoint also being. extract from this service and save this and this is the two informations that we are going to use from the program to make a call so what this program basically trying to tell us the first thing we do not have any kind of cognitive sdk is taking reference on the top. If you are a .NET developer, you can make out. There is no API or client library as of now in the using list. So it means. On the fly, I can make a call by using something called HTTP client. And that HTTP client is going to come from a system.net.http system.net.http.header. This is the two library that I can use to make a call to the cognitive service. But while I'm making an HTTP, 
uh, when I'm making a call from application with the help of HTTP request, so we need to do few things. So we are trying to uh, retrieve the two information from the app setting dot JSON. Is the app setting dot JSON where this two information is being coded? This is I configuration builder. And for this applications app setting dot JSON is being treated as a configuration source for this particular application. And then we are looking for the key called cognitive service endpoint and cognitive service key. And putting them subsequently in the respective. Variable. Which was created on the top. So we are unicoding. By using our. The console that whatever we are going to type in the console would be the secure out there. That is what we are saying because it's a console application. OK, so it's basically to Unicode character encoding standard. With a fixed length. With a fixed character encoding scheme. And that will include the character from almost all of the living language in the world. Because I can write. Spanish. I can write in English. I can write in any other language because we are going to detect the language that I'll be using. So that's how the Unicode is coming into the picture to understand encoding of Unicode. So while I'm typing my text, that will understand the Unicode. It means that will understand. Almost all of the living languages of the world. And that we are going to test in some time from now, but that is what the Unicode is all about. So what are the texts that I'm going to type from the console application and subsequently? We should be able to read that text. Putting the value into the user text. And then we are making a call to this. Get language by passing the text that we have taken. But what basically a get language is doing for me with that particular input as a text. We are jsonifying that particular text because all incoming and outgoing would be in a form of json. That is what we are discussed. So we are building a kind of JSON there. As an ID and a, a text. That is the JSON format. Each document need a unique ID and some text that I'm putting as an input. And this is a document because it's a JSON. Then we are encoding the text into an UTF-8. Before we send this text. To the cognitive service. So this is how we are encoded out there so we can print it locally what I am going to send it. The JSON document can be printed here on the local system and then we are ready to go and send it to the cognitive service. 
So where I'm making a cognitive service call, client, default request header add. This is the header we are configuring with the key, cognitive service key. And we are using a cognitive service endpoint, which is already being put out there. Reading from the app setting. This is the endpoint that we are reading here. And we are concatenating with the endpoint with three things like text, analytics, version 3.1, language, and the actual language that we are going to pass. And in response, we are getting them in a form of JSON. And we are basically printing them back on my console. So, net net, what we are looking at, this is a dot net core in order to make a call to the cognitive service by using HTTP client library. These are all the code that we are basically incorporating based on the system.net library that we have included here on the top, system.net.stdp system.net.stdp header because we are making HTTP requests to this cognitive service. OK, so with that, we are ready to run this. So we can go back to our console. So I can say. First. I want to build this applications by giving. Dot net build. So all OK, it says restore everything required, the dependencies for this application. And then we can run. So when I go and run this application, it will make a call to a cognitive service and asking me to enter some text. So I just type hello. So this is what is being sent because that is being printed first. This is the document that I'm going to send to the cognitive service with an ID and the text. And then in response, what cognitive service has given me, the detected language is English, which is being abbreviated with EN and what is the confidence score means 100% it is English. It may not be something else other than English. So my cognitive service is 100% confidence, confident that the language that you want to detect what you have typed is in English. And the model that is being used to predict is a version that we created in a year 2022, a month of October. There is no error at this moment that we have anticipated while I'm creating. The another text that suppose I want to type something like Bonjour. OK, so once I type this, it says. The detected language is France. The abbreviations for this France is FR confidence is 100%. The version is the same.
So we type something like gracious. Right, so it says. It's a Spanish. Right, so we can say. Spanish also, that is. So it is, it means your cognitive service is now working on detecting language. Because if you go back, what you want, so analytics, and we want to detect a language because it understand by passing a parameters to an endpoint where my cognitive service is up and running because I want to detect a language and by passing a text along with this API. OK, so this is something. What we can see, but yes, of course, we are technically. Trying to find out or trying to understand. The nitty gritty is behind the cognitive service. Now the same cognitive service detail can be used to work with the visions. The vision means like suppose I want to analyze an image that is also possible. Using this cognitive service. OK, so. Let me go to another way of calling because we have done this, the first one. This is what we did, so now we will be working with something to do with the .NET application. From .NET SDK. So programmatically, this is like just a making a call by using HTTP, but I must have given some kind of client API through which we should be able to call a cognitive service by writing a .NET code, the pure .NET code that has come from a particular SDK. So I'll go to uh, the next one. SDK client. Sorry. So this time also first thing we have to get my. Cognitive service credential detail. The key and the endpoint. That is the key. And the endpoint. We 
that is my application. So now we go to our program.cs. And this time the coding would be different from the previous one. And the most importantly, this time you can see using azure.ai.txt analytics. That is what we have basically gone and use the SDK one. So I have to incorporate this SDK to this particular by just giving a command like .NET add package as your AI.txt analytics with a version 5.3.0. Like we can go to a NuGet package manager and we need to install that package in the target application. My target application is SDK client at this moment, not the rest client that we did before. This is what we got this package into my current folders, the application folder here. And using this client library, now we can write. So the, the previous thing should be the same because of this Microsoft.extension.configurations to read the key from the configuration files. That is also same, the Unicode to understand the different language. And this is what we have accept the key from the console. And we are going to make a call to the get language with the specified text, but it is pretty simple than the previous one. So we are configuring the key by using Azure key credentials. If you see that as your dot as your create credentials that we get on the top. And then we are configuring the endpoint. And then we are constructing the client object with these two information. And using the client so I can make a call to the detect language with a text as a parameters and return would be coming out there and we can print the return only the name, but we can have a different properties also since we are returning it. So we won't be able to return multiple until we return as a JSON because we are just returning a string. Or we can just go and say. Plus. So you can see the name, the confidence score, right? So we can concatenate with something more on this also. This is the name that we are talking about and so on and so forth. Like we, whatever we can print, so we should be able to print from there itself. What else I can print? By just concatenating as a text only. So we put the con con confidence score we put the names and the. OK, so we can and that's it because that is what. Uh, if I have any warnings or anything like that, so we should be able to go and make use of it so we can just. So I can go now. And say dot net build all up to date and I can say dot net run so 
So we get these things. The English confidence is 100% and the abbreviation is EN. So that is the detail that we get because we are just returning this. OK, so that could be. Later on that we can make some kind of a new line out there. So I can see in a different line, but this is fine. This is what we talk about out there. So how this is being created. So we can use different language. So that is something what we get out there. Right. So we can. I mean, you know, this is all about how you supposed to go and make use of it. It's it's up to you. You know, you can you can always uh, kind of. Uh, write your applications how you want to interpret. But yes, the capability of the cognitive service is important because it's able to detect the language that I'm asking for. Because it is only going to go and do the detections with confidence. So how much confidence that you are in to tell me. About that particular language. OK, so that is what how we can make use of this cognitive service. And this is. Not only what we are doing through a console applications, but it can be do from mobile applications. You can do from any other application as long as you are applicable. I mean you are ready to use SDK or you are ready to use HTTP client because these are all HTTP service. These are all REST APIs. So you can make a call to those REST APIs by using the HTTP programming that we did it in the previous pro previous application. But this is more structured because it is use SDK. Because the detect language is a method of this class that we have created the text analytics client class. So client dot detect. So this is something that we must have. So it is more structured way of writing program by using the rest respective SDK. The SDK currently we are using Azure dot AI dot text analytics. Now, the next thing is that, you know, I can keep calling them by using different way, but the point is that. While I'm calling those, I am using. This. Confidential information, I can understand endpoint is fine, but the key is very critical. The cognitive service key, so I do not want the cognitive service key to be made available to the application developer. It need to be taken away from. 
your applications to some other service who can protect your keys and that is what we are going to look at. So to understand how we are going to secure our cognitive service while we'll be making call. So let me go back to my PPT. So while I'm going and use this cognitive service from an enterprise application, the few things that we need to take care of. So one of them is the securities. Now, if you look into the architecture, if anybody wants to make a call to the cognitive service, first you have to go and get the key from the key vault. So app retrieve the key from the key vault. App uses the service principal ID to access the key vault. Now service principal ID means an identity. Like we discussed identity while I was creating a cognitive service. Or we can have a service principal ID explicitly created for this application, this cognitive service that ID can be used in front of this key vault and take the key and go and make a call to the cognitive service. So key is no more be available within your application's code. The key would be moving out of an application code to the key vault. So what is a key vault? Key vault is an additional service on Microsoft Azure to protect your confidential information. So to avoid service interruptions, switch app to use key two before generating the key one and the vice versa. So you can you can keep generating the key. That would be difficult for an application who have used this key before. So app can use the service principle as a managed identity to retrieve the key from the key vault. The managed identity, what we discussed. So let's look at that, how we are going to implement this now. So we'll go back to my workstation. The first thing we are going to go and create a key wall service. OK, so that is what we are going to look at. Now, for example. If I go to my. If I go to a file, which is basically a curl command, as you can see. So there is a curl command. And I'm going to use an endpoint. So our endpoint is this one. So curl x post https the complete endpoint.
So we are trying to get the text analytics or the version three language. A header is a content type. And I will be passing the key. And then we are going to go and send a document as a data in a form of data as sky. So with an ID and the text. This is a command that we are using. So I can save this. So it is direct call that we are making by identifying my without any program. This is the risk call that I am making. Last time we are using HTTP programming, but we just now we are making a risk call. So I need to know two things when I'm making it from the curl one. This is your keys. And this is your data means the text with an ID that you are passing in. OK, I just save it. I can go back. And I can just say risk. Test dot CMD that is a command that. Or we can just go and use the curl command. Because it's not a bad file, so I can copy this. I can use this curl command directly. So you're going to get a result. It says the language is being detected as an English with EN. Confidence is 100%, no warning, no errors, and the model versions that is being used to detect this language. So this is something what we are making a call directly to the cognitive service by using a curl or from an any HTTP client. Like for example, if you have a postman, you can do the same. OK, so that is what we say that uh, suppose you want to test this cognitive service from a postman so you can do that. So this is like to test before we take them to the production. The postman is one of the ideal applications to. Make a call. Right, so to the. This is what we get it. So in the postman's I can go and use a post request. With this. And in the body we have to go and get this data out there. What is a JSON type? Right, so you can go and say that is the body. And we'll make it something like JSON. Something that you are doing. And then we have to go and make use of to the header. And this is the key that we are working with. So we can take this key from here. And we can make use of this key. That is the the key that we can see out there.
All right, so these are two things that we are basically making and we can see. OK, so that is key. Uh, it is not a subscription key, so we have to use it differently out there. But yes, I said. What I am saying that, you know, you can just make use of any applications where you understand the format to make a call to a cognitive service. It's not necessarily every time your application. So you can make use of that. To make a call to this, so there are varieties way of getting access to those cognitive service, what we are discussing at this moment. Oh yes, the version is important because when you talk about a particular version, there would be an enhancement. So more capability will go and come in the version. So we are using a latest version at this moment, but tomorrow the new version comes. They might have add new functionality along the language detections. They may talk about what is the origin of this language from where it was in. So they may be giving more functionality, more kind of capabilities you might go and see. So this is all about control from the version only. So currently we are using version three. Uh, but going forward, if the new version will come, it is just a enhancement on top of, but your core concept is not going to be changed. It is all about the capabilities and the functionality would be enhanced. All right, so this is one thing. So now that will time for a break, so we'll be taking a break of one hour and one will be coming back. So I'll talk about how to use key wall to protect the cognitive service. So till then, if you have any questions, so you can go ahead with your question. 